there are three forms of resistance that develop as you become an adult to making a commitment to change. It's why keeping all those resolutions are so difficult. I mean, how many times have you or have you heard of someone that you know say that they're now going to get healthy, start exercising, lose weight, you know, uh, get a new degree, get a new job, and, and nothing happens. Um, these three forms of resistance that we develop are called, quite rightly and not very nicely, the three defeats or the three forms of laziness. The first form is the laziness of beauty. We fall into a trap of having this ideal of how things should be or look in order for us to be willing to put the effort into practicing or engaging with them. We judge people first by their, their appearances, their age, their accents, class, income, education, and past. And from this judgment of what we think they should be like, to, you know, to be worthy of our interest, we decide whether or not to make the effort of getting to know them. We judge spiritual practices by whether or not they meet our fantasy or maybe one or two experiences that we've had of what we think they should look like or if they, whether or not they give us what we think we should feel when we do them. We put off engaging in exercise because we don't have the right clothes or equipment. We break our diets because one particular meal comes up that's so good or or maybe it's in a social setting or it's a, a business dinner and we feel like, oh, we, well, we can't avoid it. We put off studying something or even starting our own business because we can't afford to do it the way we want to do it. Um, none of that is real. They are all excuses we give ourselves to not have to put in effort. And therefore, not only are you not effective, in keeping your promises to yourself and to others but you become frozen and you do nothing except either complain or just keep repeating yourself when you talk about what you want to do all all of these reasons are excuses they're fantasies that you have chosen to believe are real obstacles to doing what you want to do and what you know would give you such a, a, a better life, a healthier life. The second form of laziness is that of losing heart. Most people have experienced this as a kind of procrastination or, or sometimes you, you'll hear someone say, I, I feel like I'm frozen. Maybe you're, you're sitting on a computer knowing you have to do something for work and yet you either seem incapable of the focus to do it or when you do try and do it, it just takes forever. You know, something that you know you can get done in half an hour is taking you days. Maybe you're experiencing this form of losing heart because you just never even seem to be able to get started at all, or you wait until the last minute to start, until you're under that, that kind of very stressful pressure. Um, you just spend your time thinking and talking about all the changes you want to make, or the new habits you want to acquire, or the things you want to do, and nothing ever happens. Or if anything does happen, it's so painful because you've put yourself under so much stress that when you do it, it's almost like you wish you hadn't done it at all. Somehow, you lost heart. And then this kind of heartless existence has become both okay for you and a habit. You, you chose to give up your will and your ability to control your life. And instead, you've started lying still, being frozen, and watching as, as life just passes you by. And you just don't know what to do to be able to move again. The last form of laziness is the laziness of comfort. And this is a big one. If something is not convenient for us, 
we will not make the effort to do it. If the day is too hot or the day is too cold, we will not do what we plan to do. If it is raining or snowing, you would think we would melt because we will not go where we need to go. If the food is not tasty enough, we won't eat. If the parking is not plentiful enough, we won't stop. If the distance we have to walk is not short enough, we won't even walk. If it's too late or too early for how we are used to living our lives or the people who we know will be there are not the kind of people we we like and are going to get along with, we let go of all our intentions of bringing change into our lives. We, we give ourselves these excuses because it's not a comfortable place for us. We are not physically comfortable. We are not mentally comfortable. We are not assured of emotional comfort. When we, when we live our lives by fantasy, these fantasies of stability and, and comfort and, and everything being beautiful and just the way that we want it to be or think it should be. Our realities become so full of, of pain and conflict and suffering. It seems like every time we try to do something, there's, there's something in our way. And that something is really ourselves. There are so few obstacles in life that we have no way around. The Sufi poet Rumi put it best, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing this, but he put it best when he said that in 28 days a robin can bring life from an egg. Imagine what you could do in the same time if you loved as much. The idea of 28 days being the time period needed to bring change in your life is one that has not only existed in nearly every tradition of religion, ethics, and philosophy, but it has now been recognized by the medical and psychological arts as a verifiable length of time needed for a pattern to take hold in your life. We know now, uh, from all the studies done, that it takes seven days to start a habit, 14 days to break a habit, but 28 days to create an automatic habit that creates change. Meditation has been proven to reduce stress, improve mental, emotional, and physical health. It can increase focus and clarity of thinking, reduce um, reactions to phobias. It improves self-discipline and self-esteem, and on and on and on. If you are, are thinking you are wanting to bring change into your life in any area, it is best to start from this kind of solid foundation, because a whole part of this process and problem of change does lie in the area of needing self-discipline and needing to shore up you know self-esteem and to to gain that type of focus and clarity of thinking that comes from the practice of meditation the all of these things are skills that you build with all of this increased awareness uh, confidence calmness and self-discipline you can then go on to accomplish anything you want. Each time you want to start accomplishing something, just repeat the 28 days, not the 28 days of, of meditation, but then you, you create that new pattern for yourself to start fulfilling, and you'll know that you can do it because you have this foundation and you have this experience. The morning practice of Ki and Zazen is, is uh, purposely scheduled for seven days a week, at 6 a.m. in the morning. It's not scheduled that early to make it difficult. It is actually scheduled that early to make it easy. It is easier to begin your day building your foundation than try to stick to doing it later in the day after you have just been bombarded with everything and anything. Uh, more people will skip you know, working out in the evening or meditating in the, the evening because they're tired. And the thing with meditation is it's something that you shouldn't do when you're tired. Um, so putting it that early in the morning not only makes it easier for you to do um, and to fit into work schedules, but the morning practice allows you to 
to enter your day with strength. What we encourage people to do is to commit to 28 days of this consecutive morning practice. Um, it's very simple. It's done almost completely in silence. There were no lectures or teaching or philosophy or anything like that involved with it. It's simply a shared moment at the start of your day in the company of others who are seeking to free themselves from their resistance and habits of not living the life they want to live. You, you can do it alone, but I'll tell you, it will be much, much more difficult. Uh, having the support of a community that sh is sharing the same type of commitment and going through the same type of experience and is willingly putting in the same effort is going to help sustain you through the 28 days to meeting the promise you've made to yourself. 28 days, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. It takes effort. There are going to be some things you are going to have to put off doing for 28 days. You know, 28 days of getting down there at 6, six o'clock in the morning probably means you're not going to be able to stay up as late. You know, that's, that's just reality. But it's 28 days. It's going to take some juggling. It takes commitment. But more than that, it takes you being willing to, to make a choice to make a promise to yourself and to then follow through with an action. You can start the 28 days anytime. There's no set schedule for that. These are, these are your 28 days. You know when you can do it. When you come in to begin though, let, let me know that you are there to do your 28 days and I will support you in any way that I can but the, the effort and the experience is yours and yours alone. I promise you, though, that on the 29th day, the day you get to sleep in late, that what you will have learned about yourself, what you will have learned about who you are, and what you will have learned about what you are really capable of committing to and accomplishing, will be far greater and more satisfying than any fantasy you may have now of what life can be like and any understanding you may have about who you really are and what you are truly capable of doing.